The Laravel application development framework, and more specifically, the Laravel Homestead platform, provides developers a fantastic integrated development ecosystem. However, there seems to be a tendency amongst Windows developers to investigate Homestead and then decide, for one reason or another, to revert back to using a trusted WAMP type environment. This is a mistake. Using the Laravel Homestead environment offers many, many advantages and it's really not that hard to get going on Windows. Granted, a lack of cohesive Windows documentation may make the task seem impossible, but it is truly not. This course will show you, step by step, how to deploy the Laravel Homestead development ecosystem on the Windows 10 platform, such that, when we are done, everything is seamlessly integrated and working side by side. So I invite you to join me and peek over my shoulder as I show you how to get Laravel's Homestead up and running from scratch starting with a vanilla Windows 10 installation. All done in such a way as to not pollute the core Windows installation with unwanted software. We'll unpack Git, VirtualBox, Vagrant, Homestead, PHP Storm, Composer, Bower, Laravel Alexia and more so that by the time we are done you will know exactly what each of the components does, how it interacts with the rest of the environment and have the knowledge to deploy this killer development ecosystem on your own for maximum coding productivity. Hi there, my name is Len and this is Laravel Homestead on Windows 10. Our objective is simple. Starting with a vanilla Windows 10 installation, we're going to build up and out until step by step we finish off with a fully integrated Laravel development ecosystem based on the Homestead environment. So let's quickly take a look at everything that we'll be covering during this course. Section 1 is this material we are busy with right now and towards the end we're going to take a quick look from a theory perspective in terms of the introduction to virtual machines and what they are and why it's beneficial to be using them from a development perspective. In section 2 we'll install Windows 10 onto an external hard drive so that we can create a working sandbox for us to deploy the Laravel environment into. Section 3 is a quick section devoted to the basics of Git followed by a fairly detailed look at what VirtualBox is and the benefit that this VM provider can afford us. We'll then look at Vagrant combined with Homestead following which we'll install Laravel 5.1. Obviously we need a code editor so we'll be looking at PHP Storm in section 8 and specifically setting up PHP Storm so that we have advanced in IDE debugging along with Laravel specific code completion. In section 9 we'll revisit Git again fairly quickly to take a look at the Git implications of running this source control system on a Laravel environment. Then we get to the funky stuff. In section 10 we'll take a look at Composer and how we can leverage the power of the open source community to add deep and rich back-end functionality to our applications very rapidly. In section 11 we'll be doing the same thing with Bower and Alexia but this time focused on the user experience on the front end. Section 12 is devoted to the gulp file and in section 13 we'll put everything that we've done together to show you a working example of how all these bits and pieces hang together in a cohesive development ecosystem that affords you maximum coding productivity. Section 14 is the mandatory conclusion and in section 15 I've thrown in a couple of extras. So to recap, by the end of this course you will have a completely integrated and fully functional homestead based Laravel development ecosystem for maximum coding productivity. Okay, so let's understand that we're looking at application development in terms of the web architecture and if we want to be developing on a local environment or on a local machine we need to at a bare minimum have a web server with access to a file server or a file system being driven by an application server. Now within the Windows context over the years this has led to the creation of tools such as WAMP which provide if you like a single click install environment 
that gives you all the tools like a web server and PHP out the box for deployment directly into the Windows operating system. Whilst this is all very well and good from a Windows perspective, it does lead to problems. Number one, it pollutes your Windows core host operating system with a load of things that we actually do not need. Upgrading of a single component within a WAMP or a Easy Apache or any one of those type of applications, it can be problematic, if not impossible. Then we also have an issue when it comes to deployment onto the live servers. Typically a live server is going to run some flavor of Unix, which means that there is definitely a cross compatibility issue between our development environment and the true live production environment. And finally, when it comes to development teams, well, I'm sure you can appreciate that there could be huge discrepancies between Windows installations, development team members using different types of WAMPs or Easy Apaches, different configurations, and it just leads to all sorts of problems. Now let's look at the benefits that using a VM-based architecture introduces. Well, number one, it keeps our Windows installation clean, or cleaner, because we do have to install some software. Upgrading of a single component is no longer an issue. We're running a Unix environment, so we can easily choose just to upgrade the PHP if we chose to. The development environment also now starts to mimic the production environment. Granted, we may be running CentOS in the data center, whilst our Homestead environment may be based on Ubuntu. But Ubuntu is far closer to CentOS than Windows is to CentOS. So we immediately create an environment where our development space is much more closely linked to what our ultimate production environment space is going to look like. From a development team perspective, discrepancies disappear completely because we can now issue VM images or standardized images for all the development members of the team to be using as a base standard. And as an added bonus, we get to learn some Unix so that we can play with Unix and, and Unix systems with confidence, something which uh, Windows developers have traditionally shied away from. So, what is a VM from a theory perspective? Well, you can read an official or a formal definition there if you like, but very simply put, a VM creates an abstraction layer between the hardware and the operating system layer. In a traditional environment or a traditional architecture, we have a hardware layer, then we have an operating system layer like Windows, upon which we then or into which we then install our applications. What a VM architecture does is it creates a separation between the hardware and the operating system layer. And then it takes it one level further. It allows us to run many operating systems, not necessarily all the same, on top of that same single hardware stack. And it is this type of technology that we'll now be leveraging as we look at deploying the Homestead environment from a Laravel perspective. Okay. So that's it for theory. I'm not a big one for PowerPoint slides. I know it might be slightly premature, considering that we're only going to be, de be dealing with the uh, virtual box a little bit later in the course. But I wanted to get all these theory slides and, and the PowerPoint aspect of this material out the way. When I do this type of thing, it really is a peeking over my shoulder type scenario where you watch and I show you live how to bring these things up and make it all hang together seamlessly. And I really do not like interrupting that process and the thought pattern by introducing PowerPoints. So we've got all the introductories and everything out the way. We can now move on to the next section, which is installing Windows 10.1 onto an external USB hard drive. Let's start our journey by going on a quick side mission. We're going to install Windows 10 onto an external hard drive. That way we'll have a fully functional operating system running outside of our normal production environment. As you can see, this is my production setup, just the way I like it. Therefore, I don't want to be doing anything here 
unless I'm 100% sure what the impact is going to be. This section is optional, but if you do have an external USB drive that you can use, I would strongly advise that you do not skip this. That way, you'll be able to proceed with the knowledge that nothing we will be doing later on is going to impact your current setup, until such time as you are happy to be bringing the software and configuration changes into your environment with confidence. The normal Windows installation process does not allow installation onto an external drive as the target drive for the operating system. Remember, we are wanting to generate a complete full-blown operating system, not a Windows to go environment. However, the tools exist and generating a Windows 10 installation onto an external USB drive consists of three key steps. One, we have to prep the drive. Two, we have to move the Windows operating system image to the drive. And three, we have to move a boot image to the drive. Once we are done and the machine has been rebooted, we will then be able to boot into the new Windows 10 installation. So let's get cracking.